Hi, hello there. Welcome to Network Security Concepts. This video lecture are divided into two segments. Okay, so you've got part one and part two on the next video. So perhaps you have learned and heard about hundreds of news stories about data security breach within a large corporation or even a government. Was your credit card number exposed by a breach? Your private health information. Would you like to know how to prevent these data breaches? So the field of network security is growing every day. This module provides a detailed landscape of the types of cybercrime and the many ways we have to fight back against cyber criminals. Let's get started. Okay, so for the part one of this video lecture, so we will be talking about these topics here, current state of the cybersecurity, threat actors, malware, common network attacks, and IP vulnerabilities and threats. Okay, now for the module objective, okay, so at the end of this video lecture, for part one and part two, you should be able to explain how vulnerabilities, threats, and exploits can be mitigated to enhance network security. Okay, so before we start, let's have this ethical hacking statement. So in this module, learners may be exposed to tools and techniques in a sandbox, virtual machine environment to demonstrate various types of cyber attacks. Experimentation with these tools, techniques, and resources is at the discretion of the instructor and local institution. So if the learner is considering using attack tools for educational purposes, they should contact their instructor prior to any experimentation. So an authorized process okay, or access to data, computer, and network systems is a crime in many jurisdictions and often is accompanied by severe consequences, regardless of the perpetrator's motivations. So it is the learner's responsibility as the user of this material to be cognizant of and the complaint with computer use laws. Okay, so let's start with the first section of this part one of the video. Let's talk about the current state of the cybersecurity. Okay, so cyber criminals now have the expertise and tools necessary to take down critical in infrastructure and systems. So their tools and techniques continue to evolve. So cyber criminals are taking malware to unprecedented levels of sophistication and impact. Okay, so they are more adept at using stealth and evasion techniques to hide their activity. Lastly, cyber criminals are exploiting undefended gaps in security. So network security breaches can disrupt e-commerce, cause the loss of business data, threaten people's privacy, and compromise the integrity of information. So these breaches can result in lost revenue for corporations, theft of intellectual property, lawsuits, and can even threaten public safety. So maintaining a network or a secure network ensures that safety for network users and protects commercial interests. So organizations need individuals who can recognize the speed and scale at which adversaries are amassing and refining their cyber weaponry. So all users should be aware of security terms in the table here. Okay, so you've got assets, vulnerability, threat, exploit, mitigation, and risk. So when you say assets, assets must be identified and protected. Okay, so this has something to do with anything of value to the organization. It indicates or it includes people, equipment, resources, and data. So next is vulnerability. So vulnerabilities must be addressed before they become a threat and are exploited. So a vulnerability is a weakness in a system or its design that could be exploited by a threat. Okay, so next is a threat. Threat is a potential danger to a company's assets, 
data and network functionality. Exploit is a mechanism that takes advantage of the vulnerability. Next is mitigation. So mitigation techniques are required before, during, and after an attack. Okay, so mitigation is the countermeasure that reduces the likelihood of severity of a potential threat or risk. So network security involves multiple mitigation techniques. Okay, so the last one is risk. Risk is the likelihood of a threat to exploit the vulnerability of an asset with an aim of negatively affecting an organization. So risk is measured using the probability of occurrence of an event and its consequences. Okay, so next would be vectors of network attacks. So an attack is a path by which a threat actor can gain access to a server, host, or a network. Okay. So attack vectors originate from inside or outside the corporate network, as shown in the figure here. So we've got external threat and internal threat. And this is our compromised host. For example, threat actors may target a network through the internet to disrupt network operations and create denial of service or DOS attack. Okay. So these threats are, as shown here, internal or external so take note that a dos or denial of service attack occurs when a network device or application is incapacitated and no longer capable of supporting requests from legitimate users okay so an internal user such as an employee can accidentally or intentionally steal and copy confidential data to removable media email messaging, software, and other media. So compromise internal servers or network infrastructure devices or disconnect a critical network connection and cause a network outage. So it could be connecting an infected USB drive into a corporate computer system. Okay, so internal threats have the potential to cause greater damage than external threats because internal users have direct access to the building and its infrastructure devices. So employees, students may also have knowledge of the corporate network, its resources, and its confidential data. So network security professionals must implement tools and apply techniques for mitigating both external okay, and internal threats. Okay, so the next one is data loss. Okay, so data is likely to be an organization's most valuable asset. So organizational data can include research and development data, sales data, financial data, human resource and legal data, employee data, contractor data, and customer data. So data loss or data exfiltration is when data is intentionally or unintentionally lost, stolen, or leaked to the outside world. So the data loss can result in brand damage and loss of reputation, loss of competitive advantage, loss of customers, loss of revenue, okay, litigation or legal action resulting in fines and civil penalties or significant cost and effort to notify affected parties and recover from the breach. So network security professionals must protect the organization's data. So various data loss prevention or DLP controls must be implemented, which combine strategic, operational, and tactical measures. Okay. Now, these are the common data loss vectors, okay, so which displays on this table. So this includes email or social networking, unencrypted devices, cloud storage devices, removable media, hard copy, and improper access control. Okay. Okay, so on the next section, we will be talking about the threat actors. So what are these threat actors in security? 
Okay? Now, in the previous topic, you gained a high-level look at the current landscape of cybersecurity. So, including the types of threats and vulnerabilities that block all network administrators and architects. Okay? Now, in this topic, you will learn more details about particular types of threat actors. Okay? So, hacker is a common term used to describe a threat actor. So as shown in this table here, the terms white hat hacker, okay, you've got the black hat hacker and the gray hat hacker are often used to describe a type of hacker. Okay, so when you say white hat hacker, these are ethical hackers who use their programming skills for good, ethical and legal purposes. Okay, so security vulnerabilities are reported to developers for them to fix before the vulnerabilities can be exploited. Okay? So the next one are the gray, uh, gray hat hackers. Who are they? Okay? So these are individuals who commit crimes and do arguably unethical things. Okay? But not for personal gain or to cause damage. Gray hat hackers may disclose a vulnerability to the affected organization after having compromised their system. Okay? And the last one is a black hat hackers. So these are unethical criminals who compromise computer and network security for personal gain or for malicious reasons such as attacking the networks. Okay. Now in this course, we will use them, okay, the term hacker outside of this module. Okay. So we will use the term threat actor. So the term threat actor includes hackers, okay? But threat actor also includes any device, person, group, or nation, state that is intentionally or unintentionally the source of an attack, okay? All right, so let's take a look at the evolution of a hacker or hackers. So hacking started in the 1960s with prone freaking or breaking okay which refers to using audio frequencies to manipulate phone systems so at that time telephone switches used various tones to indicate different functions early hackers realized that by mimicking a tone using a whistle they could exploit the phone switches to make free long distance calls all right now in the mid 1980s computer dial up modems were used to connect computers to the networks so hackers wrote wired dialing programs which dialed each number or telephone number in a given area in search for computers. So when a computer was found, password cracking programs were used to gain access. So this table here displays the modern hacking terms and brief description of it. So this includes script kiddies. So when you say script kiddies, these are teenagers or inexperienced hackers running existing scripts, tools, and exploits to cause harm, but typically not for profit, okay? So sort of, okay, starters, so our script kit is, okay? So the next one are um, vulnerability brokers, okay? So these are usually gray hat hackers who attempt to discover exploits and report them to vendors, sometimes for prizes or rewards. Okay, so the next term would be hacktivists. So these are gray hat hackers who publicly protest organizations or governments by posting articles, videos, leaking sensitive information, and performing network attacks. Okay, so the next hacking term is cyber criminals. These are black uh, hat hackers who are either self-employed or working for large cybercrime organization. Okay. And the next one would be the state sponsored. So these are either white hat or black hat hackers who steal government secrets, gather intelligence and sabotage networks. So their targets are foreign governments, terrorist groups, and corporations. So most countries in the world participate to some degree in state sponsored hacking. Okay. So the next term would be cyber criminals. So it is estimated that cyber criminals 
steal billions of dollars from consumers and businesses. Okay, cyber criminals operate in an underground economy where they buy, sell, and trade attack toolkits, zero day exploit code, okay, botnet services, banking, Trojans, key bloggers, or key laggers, and much more. So they also buy and sell the private information and intellectual property they can steal or they steal. So cyber criminals target small businesses and consumers as well as large enterprises and entire industries. Okay, so hacktivists, two examples of hacktivist groups are Anonymous and the Syrian Electronic Army. Okay, although most hacktivist groups are not well organized, they can cause significant problems for governments and businesses. So hacktivists tend to rely on fairly basic, freely available tools. Okay, so next would be the state-sponsored hackers. So state-sponsored hackers create advanced customized attack code, often using previously undiscovered software vulnerabilities called the zero-day vulnerabilities. So an example of the state-sponsored attack involves the Stuxnet malware. Okay, so that was created to damage Iran's nuclear enrichment capabilities. All right. Okay, so next section will cover threat actor tools. So what are the different tools used by these threat actors? Okay, so introduction to attack tools. So to exploit vulnerability, a threat actor must have a technique or a tool. So over the years, attack tools have become more sophisticated and highly automated. So these new tools require less technical knowledge to implement. Okay. Now, referring on the table or diagram here, okay, so um, we can see that it shows a bar with sophistication of attack tools, okay, on the left, <clears throat> and a bar with technical knowledge on the right, okay. So, in 1985, as time passed by, so the sophistication of attack grew into a required technical knowledge diminished, okay. Okay, so next would be the evolution of the security tools. Okay, so ethical hacking involves many different types of tools used to test the network and keep its data secure. So to validate the security of a network and its systems, many network penetration testing tools have been developed. So it is unfortunate that many of these tools can be used by black hat hackers for exploitation. Okay, so black hat hackers can also have created many hacking tools. So these tools are created explicitly for nefarious reasons. So white hat hackers must also know how to use these tools when performing network penetration testing. Okay, now this includes password crackers, okay, the wireless hacking tools, the network scanning and hacking tools packet crafting tools, and packet sniffers, okay? Now, this table highlights the categories of common penetration testing tools. Notice that, okay, how some tools are used by white hats and black hats. So keep in mind that the list is not exhaustive as new tools are always being developed, okay? So password crackers, example includes uh, Luft crack, okay, THE Hydra, the Rainbow crack, Medusa, Jan the Reaper. Okay, so those are all password crackers. So, password cracking tools are often referred to as a password recovery tools and can be used to crack or recover a password. So, password crackers repeatedly make guesses in order to crack the passwords. Okay, so the next one is wireless hacking tools. So the wireless hacking tools are used to intentionally hack into a wireless, okay, to detect security vulnerabilities. So example of wireless hacking tools include the air cracking, okay, Kismet, 
the in SSID Dir, Kismac, Fireship, and the Vice Tumbler. Okay, so the next penetration testing tool is network scanning and hacking tools. So network scanning tools are used to probe network devices, servers, and hosts for open TCP or UDP. Okay, so examples of scanning tools include Nmap, SuperScan, Angry IP Scanner, and NetScan tools. Okay, so next tool would be a packet crafting tools. These tools are used to probe and test a firewall robustness using specifically crafted first packets. Examples include HPing, SCAPI, SOCAT, okay, Yersinia, NETCAT, NPing, and Nemesis. You also have the packet sniffers. So these tools are used to capture and analyze packets with traditional Ethernet LANs or wireless LANs. So tools include Wireshark, Okay, so TC Dump, EtherCap, DSNIF, okay, so EtherApe, Paros, Fiddler, Rat Proxy, and SSL Strip. Alright, so also take note that many of these tools are Unix or Linux based. So therefore, a security professional should have a strong Unix and Linux background. Okay, so also included are the rootkit detectors. So this is a directory and file integrity checker used by white hats to detect installed rootkits. So example tools includes the AIDE, NetFilter, and PF, OpenBSD packet filter. So next would be the fuzzers, okay, to search vulnerabilities. So fuzzers are tools used by threat actors to discover a computer security vulnerabilities. Examples of fuzzers include Skipfish, Wapiti, and W3AF. Okay, you also have forensic tools. These tools are used by white hat hackers to sniff out any trace of evidence existing in a computer. So, examples of tools include this Lyothkit, Helix, Maltego, and Incase. All right. So debugger tools or debugger penetration tools are also available. So these tools are used by black hat hackers, okay, to reverse engineer binary files when writing exploits. So they are also used by white hat when analyzing malwares. So debugging tools include GDB, Win, uh, DBG, IDA Pro, and Immunity Debugger. So hacking operating systems. So these are specially designed operating systems preloaded with tools optimized for hacking. So examples of specially designed hacking operating systems include Kali Linux and Blackbox Linux. Okay. So next would be the encryption tools. So encryption tools use algorithm schemes to encode the data to prevent unauthorized access to the encrypted data. So examples of these tools include VeraCrypt, Okay, CypherShed, OpenSSH, OpenSSL, Tor, OpenVPN, and Stunnel. Okay, you also have the vulnerability exploitation, uh, exploitation tools. These tools identify whether a remote host is vulnerable to security attack. So examples of vulnerability exploitation tools include the Metalsploit, Core Impact, SQL Map, Social Engineer Toolkit, and NetSparker. Next would be vulnerability scanners. So these tools can uh, scan a network or system to identify open ports. So they can also be used to scan for known vulnerabilities and scan VMs, BYOD devices, and client databases. So examples of tools include Nipper, Core Impact, Nexus, or Nessus. Saint and open pass. Right? So again, take note that many of these tools here are Unix or Linux based systems. So therefore, a security professional should have a strong Unix and Linux background. All right. So next would be attack types. Okay? So threat actors can use the previously mentioned attack tools. 
or a combination of tools to create attacks. So the table displays common types of attacks. However, the list of attacks is not exhaustive as new attack vulnerabilities are constantly being discovered. Okay, so this includes eavesdropping attack, data modification attack, IP address spoofing attack, password-based attacks, denial of service attack, man in the middle attack, compromised key attack, and sniffer attack. Okay, so eavesdropping, this is when a threat actor captures and listens to network traffic. So this attack is referred to as sniffing or snooping. Okay, so next one would be the data modification attack. So if threat actors have captured enterprise traffic, they can alter the data in the packet without the knowledge of the sender or the receiver. So IP address spoofing attack is a threat actor constructs an IP packet that appears to originate from a valid address inside the corporate internet. Okay? When you say password-based attacks, so if threat actors discover a valid user account, the threat actors have the same rights as the real user. So threat actors could use that valid account to obtain list of other users, network information, change server and network configurations, and modify, reroute, or delete data. Okay? The denial of service attack, a DOS attack prevents normal use of a computer or network by valid users. So a DOS attack can flood a computer or the entire network with traffic until a shutdown occurs because of the overloading. So a DOS or denial of service attack can also block traffic, which results in a loss of access to network resources by authorized users. Okay. Now man in the middle attack, this attack occurs when threat actors have positioned themselves between the source and destination. Okay, so they can now actively monitor, capture, and control the communication transparently. Next would be the compromised key attack. So if a threat actor obtains a secret key, that key is referred to as an accomplished or compromised key. Okay, a compromised key can be used to gain access to a secured communication without the sender or receiver being aware of the attack. Okay, so next would be sniffing attack. So a sniffer is an application or device that can read, monitor, and capture network data exchanges and read network packets. So if the packets are not encrypted, a sniffer provides a full view of the data inside the packet. All right, so on this section, we will be talking about malwares, okay? What is a malware? So now that you know about the tools that hackers use, this topic introduces you to different types of malware that hackers use to gain access to end devices, okay? So end devices are particularly prone to malware attacks. So it is important to know about malware because threat actors rely on users to install malware to help exploit the security gaps, okay? So the primary vulnerabilities for an end user workstations are viruses, okay, a worm, and Trojan horses, okay? So as shown on this uh, diagram here, okay? So when you say virus, virus is a malicious software which executes a specific unwanted and often harmful function on a computer. So the next one would be Worm, okay? Worm executes arbitrary codes and install copies of itself in the memory of the infected computers. So the main purpose of Worm is to automatically replicate itself and spread across the network from system to system. So the next one is a Trojan horse, okay? This is a non-self-replicating type of malware it often contains malicious code that is designed to look like something else, such as legitimate application or file. Okay, So when an infected application or file is downloaded and opened, the Trojan horse can attack the end device from within. 
Okay. All right. So viruses and Trojan horses. So the first and most common type of computer malware is a virus. So viruses requires human action to propagate and infect other computers. For example, a virus can infect a computer when a victim opens an email attachment, opens a file on a USB drive, or downloads a file. All right. So the virus hides by attacking or attaching itself to a computer code, software, or documents on the computer. So when opened, the virus executes and infects the entire computer systems. Okay. So viruses can alter, corrupt, delete files, or erase the entire drives. Okay. It can cause computer booting issues and corrupt applications. It can capture and send sensitive information to threat actors, access and use email accounts to spread, and lay dormant until summoned by a threat actor. All right. Okay, so modern viruses are developed for specific intent, such as those listed in this table here. Okay, so you've got the boot sector virus, the firmware viruses, macro virus, program viruses, and script viruses. Okay, now a boot sector virus, a virus attacks the boot sector, partition or file partition table, or the file system of the hard disk. Okay, when you say firmware viruses, this virus attacks the device firmware. Okay. Macro viruses uses the MS Office macro feature maliciously. So program viruses, virus inserts itself in another executable program. So this is the most common type of virus. Okay. You also have script viruses. Virus attacks the OS interpreter, which is used to execute scripts. Okay, so threat actors use Trojan horses to compromise hosts. So a Trojan horse is a program that looks useful but also carries malicious code. So Trojan horses are often provided with free online programs such as computer games. Okay, so unsuspecting users download and install the game along with a Trojan horse. All right now, there are several types of Trojan horses as described on this table. So this includes remote access, data sending, destructive proxy, FTP, security software disabler, the denial of service, and the keylogger. Okay. So Trojan, okay, or Trojan horse enables unauthorized remote access. That is remote access type of Trojan horse. Now data sending, Trojan horse provides the threat actor with sensitive data such as passwords. Okay. Destructive, Trojan horse corrupts or deletes files. Proxy, Trojan horse will use the victim's computer as the source device to launch attacks and perform other illegal activities. Okay, FTP Trojan horse, Trojan horse enables unauthorized file transfer services and end devices. So security software disabler, Trojan uh, horses stops antivirus programs or firewalls from functioning. Okay. So denial of service, Trojan horse slows or halt network activity. And the last one is keylogger. Trojan horse actively attempts to steal confidential information such as credit card numbers or credit card information by recording keystrokes entered into a web form. Okay. So viruses and Trojan horses are the only two types of malware that threat actors use. There are many other types of malware that can have been designed for specific purposes. All right. Okay, so other types of malware. So this includes adware, ransomware, rootkit, spyware, and worm. Okay. Now, adware is usually distributed by downloading online software. So, adware can display unsolicited advertising using pop-up web browsers, windows, new toolbars, or unexpectedly redirect web page to a different website. Okay. So, ransomware 
typically denies a user access to their files by encrypting the files and then displaying a message demanding for a ransom for the decryption key. So users without up-to-date backup must pay the ransom to decrypt the files. Okay, so payment is usually made using wire transfer or the cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin. Okay, so the next one is rootkit. So rootkits are used by threat actors to gain administrators account level access to a computer. So there are, or they are very difficult to detect because they can alter firewall, antivirus protection, system files, or even the OS commands to conceal their presence. Okay, so spyware, like adware, but used to gather information about the user and send to threat actors without the user's consent. So spyware can be low threat gathering browsing data, or it can be a high threat capturing personal or financial information. So the last one would be worm. So Worm is a self-replicating program that propagates automatically without the user's actions by exploiting vulnerabilities in legitimate software. So it uses the network to search other victims with the same vulnerability. So the intent of Worm is usually to slow or disrupt network operations. Okay, so let's talk about the common network attacks. Okay, so let's start with an overview of the common network attacks. So as you have learned, there are many types of malware that hackers can use. Okay, so but these are not the only ways that they can attack a network or even an organization. So when malware is delivered and installed, so the payload can be used to cause a variety of network related attacks. So to mitigate attacks, it is useful to understand the types of attacks. Okay, so that is by categorizing network attacks, it is possible to address types of attacks rather than individual attacks. Okay, so networks are susceptible to the following types of attacks. So you've got the reconnaissance attacks, access attacks, and DOS or denial of service attacks. Okay, so for the reconnaissance attack, so reconnaissance is simply information gathering. Okay, so it is analogous to a thief surveying a neighborhood by going door to door, pretending to sell something. Okay, so what the thief is actually doing is looking for vulnerable homes. Okay, so to break into such as unoccupied residences, residences with easy to open doors or windows, and those residences without security systems or security cameras. Okay. Now, threat actors use reconnaissance or recon attacks to do unauthorized discovery and mapping of systems, services, and vulnerabilities. So recon attacks precede access attacks or the denial of service attack. Okay, so some of the techniques used by malicious threat actors to conduct reconnaissance attacks are described in this table. Okay. So perform information query of a target. So with this one, the threat actor is looking for initial information about the target. So various tools can be used, including Google search, organization websites, who is, and more. Okay. So the second technique is to initiate a ping sweep of the target network. So the information query usually reveals the target network address. Okay. The threat actors can now initiate a ping sweep to determine which IP addresses are active. Okay, so next technique would be initiate a port scan of active IP address. Okay, so this is used to determine which ports or services are available. So examples of port scanners include Nmap, SuperScan, Angry IP Scanner, and NetScan tools. Okay. So the next one would be run vulnerability scanners. So this is to query the identified ports to determine the type and version of the application and operating system that is running on the host. So examples of tools includes uh, Nipper, 
Okay, Core Impact, Nessus, Saint, and Open VAS. Okay, so the last one would be Run Exploitation Tools. So the threat actors now attempt to discover vulnerable services that can be exploited. So a variety of vulnerability exploitation tools exist, including you've got the Metasploit, Core, Compa, uh, Core Impact, the SQL Map, Social Engineer Toolkit, and NetSparker. Uh, All right. So some of the techniques used by malicious threat actors to conduct reconnaissance attacks are described on this table here. Okay. So let's have the first one, which is perform an initial or information query of a target. Okay. Now in the figure here, it shows a threat actor using the application who is, okay, or who is command to find information about the target. All right. So the next technique that was mentioned earlier was to initiate a ping sweep to the target network. Okay. This is performing ping sweeps. So the figure here, okay, shows a threat actor doing a ping sweep of the target's network address to determine or discover live and active IP addresses. All right. Okay. So the next one would be initiate a port scan of active IP addresses. Now, take note that from the diagram or from the figure here, it shows a threat actor performing a port scan onto the discovered active IP address using Nmap. All right, so Nmap is the tool that is used by this um, threat actor. All right. Okay, so next thing is the access attacks. All right. So access attacks exploits known vulnerabilities in authentication services, FTP services, and web services. So the purpose of these types of attack is to gain entry to web accounts, confidential databases, and other sensitive information. So threat actors use access attacks on network devices and computers to retrieve data, gain access, or to escalate access privileges to administrator status, okay? So this includes password attack, okay? Spoofing attack, okay? And other attacks, all right? So like uh, trust exploitations, port redirections, man in the middle attacks, and buffer flow or buffer overflow attacks. All right, so in the password attacks, okay? In a password attack, the threat actor attempts to discover critical system passwords using various methods. So password attacks are very common and can be launched using a variety of password cracking tools. Okay. Now for spoofing attack. So in spoofing attacks, the threat actor device attempts to pose as another device by falsifying data. So common spoofing attacks includes IP spoofing, MAC address spoofing, and DHCP spoofing. So this spoofing attacks will be discussed in more detail later on this video lecture. Okay, so let's take the other attacks, okay, so which includes trust exploitations. Okay, now trust exploitation in this diagram here, in a trust exploitation attack, a threat actor uses unauthorized privileges to gain access to the system. Okay? Possibly compromising the target. Alright? So, take note that in this diagram, okay, or figure. So, refer to the figure to view an example of trust exploitation here. Okay? So, take a look at this threat actor trying to access devices, all right, they're compromised uh, devices using the username PS Smith, all right, and he's trying to attack systems A, all right, so and systems B. Take note that systems A trusts systems B and system B here trusts everyone, okay? So we call it the trust exploitation, 
All right, so we're in the user or the attacker or threat actor uses unauthorized privileges to gain access to the system. Okay, so the next one would be port exploitation. Okay, now in a port exploitation or port redirection, okay, so we call it port redirection attack, a threat actor uses a compromised system as base for attacks against other targets. So the example in the figure shows a threat actor using SSH or the secure uh, shell port 22 to connect to the compromised host A. Okay. Now host A is trusted by host B and therefore, all right, the threat actor can use telnet port 23 to access it. So we call it port redirection. Okay. So next would be man in the middle attacks or the MITM okay now man in the middle attack the threat actor is positioned between the two legitimate entities in order to read or modify the data that passes between the two parties so the figure here displays an example of the MITM or the man in the middle attack all right okay so the next one would be a buffer overflow attacks okay now in a buffer overflow attack the threat actor exploits the buffer memory and overwhelms it with unexpected values so this is or usually okay renders the system inoperable so creating a denial of service or dos attack okay now the figure here shows that the threat actor is sending many packets to the victim in an attempt to overflow the victim's buffer okay so we call it buffer overflow attacks all right so next one would be social engineering attacks so social engineering is a process or is an access attack that attempts to manipulate individuals into performing actions or divulging confidential information so some social engineering techniques okay are performed in person all right while others may use telephone or the internet so social engineers often rely on people's willingness to be helpful all right they also prey on people's weaknesses for example so a threat actor could call an authorized employee okay with an urgent problem that requires immediate network access so the threat actor would appeal to the employee's vanity okay so invoking the authority using name dropping techniques or appeal to the employee's grid all right so that is social engineering attacks now, information about social engineering techniques is shown in this table. So, this includes pretexting. Okay. So, a threat actor pretends to need personal or financial data to confirm the identity of the recipient. So, we call it pretexting. Okay. You also have phishing. A threat actor sends a fraudulent email, which is disguised as being from a legitimate, trusted source. To trick the recipient into installing malware on their device or to share personal or financial information okay you also have uh, spear phishing a threat actor creates a targeted phishing attack tailored for the specific individual or organization okay so this one is common spam okay so also known as junk mail this is unsolicited email which often contains harmful links malware or deceptive content okay so something for something sometimes called kid pro quo right so kid pro quo this is when a threat actor requests personal information from a party in exchange of or in exchange for something such as gift or favor all right so next is baiting a threat actor leaves a malware infected flash drive 
in a public location. So a victim finds the drive and unsuspectingly inserts it into their laptop, unintentionally installing malware. Alright, so that's baiting. So next would be impersonation. Okay, so this type of attack is where the threat actor pretends to be someone. They are not to gain the trust of a victim. Okay, so tailgating, this is where the threat actor quickly follows an authorized person. Okay, into a secure location to gain access to a secure area. Tailgating. Okay, so the next one is shoulder surfing. Okay, so shoulder surfing, this is where the threat actor inconspicuously look or looks over someone's shoulder to steal their passwords or other information okay and the last one would be dumpster diving this is where a threat actor rummages through trash bins to discover confidential documents all right okay so um, what are the recommended social engineering protection practices okay so the social engineering toolkit or set was designed to help white hackers or white hat hackers and other network security professionals create a social engineering attacks to test their own networks okay so enterprises must educate their users about the risk of social engineering and develop strategies to validate identities over the phone, via email, or in person. So the figure here shows a recommended practices that should be followed by all the users. Okay, so this includes, okay, so like always destroy confidential information according to organization policy. Never give username or password credentials to anyone. All right. So never leave your username, password, credentials where they can easily be found. Never open emails from untrusted sources. Okay. Never release work-related information on the social media sites. Never reuse work-related passwords. Okay. Always lock and sign out of your computer when unattended and always report suspicious individuals so these are just some of the recommendations okay and protection against uh, social engineering attacks okay so the next one would be dos or denial of service and you've got the ddos or the distributed denial of service so a denial of service or dos attack creates some sort of interruption of network services to the users, devices, or applications. So these are the two major types of the DOS attack. You've got overwhelming quantity of traffic and maliciously formatted packets. Okay. Now, overwhelming quantity of traffic, the threat actor sends an enormous quantity of data at a rate that the network host or application cannot handle. So this causes transmission response, okay, to slow down so it can also crash uh, a device or a service so the next one is maliciously formatted packets so the threat actor sends a maliciously formatted packet to a host or application and the receiver is una unable to handle uh, uh, to handle it okay so this causes the receiving device to run very slowly or crash okay now for the DOS attack, so DOS attacks are the major risk, okay? Because they interrupt communication and cause significant loss of time and money. So these attacks are relatively simple, okay? So to conduct even if by unskilled threat actor, okay? So something like this threat actor here sends so many pings to the server Okay, and the server can't respond to anyone else. All right, so you are flooding the server with inquiries or ping so that they cannot respond to other inquiries from the hosts or from other uh, clients here. Okay. 
Now, when you say distributed denial of service attack or DDoS, this is similar to DOS attack. Okay, so but it originates from multiple coordinated sources. So for example, okay, so a threat actor builds a network of infected uh, hosts known as zombies, right? So the threat actor uses the command and control or CNC to send control messages to the zombies. Now the zombies constantly scan and infect more hosts with bot malware. Now the bot malware okay, is designed to infect a host, making it a zombie that can communicate with the CNC or the command and control. Now the collection of zombies is called botnet. All right. So when ready, the threat actor instructs the CNC or the command and control to make the botnet of zombies carry out the distributed denial of service. All right. Okay, so on this section, we will be talking about IP vulnerabilities and threats. Okay, now IPv4 and IPv6. So IP does not validate whether the source IP address contained in a packet actually came from that source. For this reason, threat actors can send packets using a spoofed source IP address. Threat actors can also tamper with other fields in the IP header to carry out their attacks. So security analysts most understand or must understand the different fields in both the IPv4 and IPv6 headers. Okay. Now some of the more common IP related attacks are shown on this table. So you've got ICMP attacks, amplification and uh, reflection attacks, address spoofing attacks, man in the middle attacks and session hijacking okay now for icmp attacks threat actors use the icmp or the internet control message protocol echo packets or pings to discover subnets and hosts on a protected network so that is to generate the denial of service floods attacks and to alter host routing tables so next would be amplification and reflection attacks. So threat actors attempts to prevent legitimate users from accessing information or services using the denial and denial or distributed denial of service attacks. Okay. So next would be address spoofing attacks. Now threat actors spoof the source IP address in an IP packet to perform blind spoofing or non-blind spoofing man in the middle as mentioned earlier okay, in the previous slides threat actors position themselves between the source and the destination to transparently monitor capture and control the communication so they could eavesdrop by inspecting captured packets or alter packets and forward them to their original destination all right so the last one would be the session hijacking, threat actors gain access to the physical network and then use the MITM or the man in the middle attack to hijack a session. All right, so for the ICMP attacks, so threat actors use ICMP or ICMP for reconnaissance and scanning attacks. So they can launch information gathering attacks to map out a network topology discover which hosts are active or reachable identify the host operating system or OS fingerprinting and determine the state of the firewall so threat actors also use ICMP for the denial of service attacks okay so take note that ICMP for uh, IPv4 or ICMP version 4 and ICMP for version 6 or IPv6 or the no, known as the ICMP v6 are susceptible to similar types of attack. So networks should have a strict ICMP access control list or ACL filtering on the network edge to avoid ICMP probing from the internet. Okay. So security analysts 
should be able to detect ICMP related attacks by looking at captured traffic and log files. Right? So, in the case of the large network, security devices such as uh, firewall and intrusion detection systems or IDS detect such attacks and generate alerts to the security analysts. All right. So, this table here shows the common ICMP messages of interest to threat actors. All right. And this includes ICMP echo request and echo reply, which is used to perform host verification and denial of service attacks. Okay. You also have the ICMP unreachable. This is used to perform network reconnaissance and scanning attacks. ICMP mask reply. This is used to map an internal IP network. ICMP redirects. All right. So this is used to lure a target host into ascending all traffic through a compromised device and create a man in the middle attack. Okay. So the last one would be ICMP router discovery. So this is used to inject bogus route entries into the routing table of a target hosts. Okay. Now let's focus on the amplification and reflection attacks. Okay. Now threat actors often use amplification and reflection techniques to create DOS attacks. Now the example in the figure, right? So illustrates how an amplification and reflection technique called Smurf attack is used to overwhelm a target host. Okay. So this um, amplification and reflection technique is also known as the Smurf attack. Okay. Now let us define the amplification. Okay. So amplification, the threat actor forwards ICMP echo request messages to many hosts. Okay. This messages contains the source IP address of the victim. Reflection, this hosts reply to the spoofed IP address of the victim to overwhelm it. Okay. So these are the replies here. Okay, so take note that newer forms of amplification and reflection attacks such as DNS-based reflection and amplification attacks and network time protocol or NTP amplification attacks are now being used. Okay, so threat actors also use resource exhaustion attacks. These attacks consume the resources of the target host to either to crush it or to consume the resources of a network. Okay, so next would be address spoofing attack. So IP address spoofing attack occurs when a threat actor creates a packet with false source IP address information to either hide the identity of the sender or to pose as another legitimate user. Okay, so the threat actor can then gain access to otherwise inaccessible data or circumvent security configuration. Spoofing is usually incorporated into another attack such as the Smurf attack. Okay. Now spoofing attacks can be non-blind or blind. Okay. So non-blind spoofing, the threat actor can see the traffic that is being sent between the host and the target. So the threat actor uses non-blind spoofing to inspect the reply packet from the target victim. So non-blind spoofing determines the state of a firewall and sequence number prediction. So it can also hijack an authorized session. Okay. Now, when you say blind spoofing, the threat actor cannot see the traffic that is being sent between the host and the target. So blind spoofing is used in DOS attack. So MAC address spoofing attacks are used when target or threat actors have access to the internal network. Okay. Now threat actors alter the MAC address of their host to match another known MAC address of a target host. So 
The attacking host then sends a frame throughout the network with the newly configured MAC address. So when the switch receives the frame, it examines the source MAC address. All right. Okay, so we have here an example, threat actor spoof a server's MAC address. Okay, now the switch here overrides the current CAM table entry and assigns the MAC address to the new port. Okay, now it then forward the frames destined for the target host to the attacking host. All right, next. The switch updates the CAM table with spoofed address. So application or service spoofing is another spoofing example. So a threat actor can connect a rogue DHCP server okay, to create the man in the middle attack or the MITM condition. So thanks for watching and listening. So this would be the end of part one of this module. See you on part two.